Thank you, Rachel, for that beautiful music welcoming us to worship on this Wednesday night, midweek Lenten service here at Chatech and Dover Lutheran Church, beautiful downtown Chatech. Uh, glad you could join us, and we welcome those streaming online and dialing into our worship tonight. We're going to begin worship by singing, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine. Again, welcome to worship. Uh, please sign with me as we gather as a fellowship in Christ. I'm a child of God. I am loved by God, and I'm never alone. That's why we're together, together in the Lord tonight. And our evening prayer is on the screen. I'll read the light print if you'll read the bold. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your ways be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thanks to Bob Rogers for sharing the readings tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Our first reading this morning is Psalm 133. It's very short, so let's all of us recite that in unison. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon. There, I got through that. 
second reading is from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Here ends the reading.
Every time I feel the spirit, Cameron, I'm going to think of you now. God has given you a gift. Thanks for sharing it with us tonight as we thank God for his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We do gather, O oh God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and thank you that you've revealed yourself to us in many and wondrous ways. And call us to faithfulness and obedience and to a life of prayer. As you have modeled for us, Jesus, we pray in your name. Amen. Yeah, this Lenten season, we're looking at the prayers of Jesus. What better person to look at as far as models for prayer? And thanks for Sandy Gunderson getting us off on the right track last week with the best prayer ever, right? The Lord's Prayer, which I think we all memorize early on, and it's, it's something that sticks there through life. I've seen it in people who who have been told their memory's gone, but you start saying the Lord's Prayer with them, guess what? Our Father, it's there. Just like a lot of the hymns we learn, you start singing them, they're there. That's why God calls us to sing the Psalms, to remember the prayers. And tonight, we hear the prayer of Jesus from John's Gospel, praying that we might all be uno, one. May we all live as one, like the Father and the Spirit and the Son. May we all live as one, like the moon and the stars and the sun. May we all live as one. May we all live in peace, like the birds and the flowers and the trees. May we all live in peace. May we all live in love with the help from the Spirit up above. May we all live in love. Of course, Jesus not only prayed that, but he lived it out to the bitter end because he knew there would be forces that would want to divide us apart, we followers of Jesus. There would be quarrels, jealousies, control issues, social issues, you name it, all kinds of things that divide us, like Peter and Paul fighting over how to minister to, to Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. And so they parted ways. The early church had their divisions. Or think of the middle-aged church where a guy like Martin Luther pops up to help call us back to the one true foundation and rock for the unity, Jesus the Christ. Not church authorities, not church structures, not cultures. Well, there's a 30-year war in the empire. Millions of people died, Protestants and Catholics fighting over different beliefs and opinions. That's why Jesus prayed, may we all be one. That prayer is as urgent tonight as ever as we see schisms and conflicts, not only in our churches, our, our country, our culture, of course, in the world. Think of how ironic it sounds to say religious wars. People believing in God and yet killing in the name of God. And whose side is God on? Everyone. For God so loved who? The world that he gave his only son. 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We read in Hebrews, so we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses who cheer us on in this race called life. So let us run with perseverance the race set is before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the pain of the cross. The one who said we must love one another and then they'll know we are Christians. That'll be the sign. Of course, that's the key to unity in Christ, is the love. Like Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, love is patient, it's kind, it's long-suffering, it doesn't seek its own way, it seeks the welfare of the other. There is where unity grows as we run that race of life in that spirit. I remember a friend in Nebraska who told me about her daughter who participated in the Special Olympics every year. Gifted children, specially gifted, specially challenged, they had their Olympics. And she talked about her daughter being in this race, I can't remember if it's 100 meters or 400, and all the kids started out together. And one of the kids fell down skunned her knees. One of the other racers heard and looked and turned back. Then another. Then another. They all turned back. They helped the little girl that was crying get up. They all ran to the finish line together. They were all winners. All won, as God calls us to be in this race of life. May it be so with you and me. When one falls, we don't look back and leave him. We pick him up and get together to the finish line. In the name of our Lord, amen. So now we'll pray together as our Lord calls us to. Pray for our church, our country, our nation, and world. Close to home, we want to remember Earl and Kathy Grover and, and Lou and Kathy Dorsey on the passing of their brother Clayton, who died this past week. There will be a celebration of life planned for Clayton later on. Also a friend of the community, Elizabeth Zahorsky, who passed away this past week. Her funeral will be here Friday at noon. Pray for Elizabeth's family. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for praying for us and calling us to be a people of prayer, knowing that you answer our prayers, sometimes with yes, sometimes with no, sometimes with wait, but always knowing that you are in the midst of our prayers. And tonight we do pray for our nation, for all the nations of the world, especially where there is schism and conflict, persecution and oppression, and help us daily find ways to build the unity that you give us in your name. For as we hear in the Bible, there's one faith, one baptism, and one Lord of us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all those tonight that call out for love and mercy especially the hungry and the poor, the homeless and the refugee, those who are sick and dying, those who live with strife and violence and war, and pray for peace in the world tonight, especially in the Ukraine and other places where people call out for peace and justice, and bless all the peacemakers who stand in harm's way for the sake of justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for those we know to be ill and hospitalized tonight, those facing and recovering from surgeries or undergoing treatments. We pray for Sandy Kirshner, Vicki Anderson, and Donna Lindbaum. We pray for Linda Olson, Shirley Morley's son Dana, and others we name before you in our prayers.
God of all comfort, be with those who mourn tonight, especially be with the Grover family on the passing of Clayton, the Zahorsky family on the passing of Elizabeth, and others we name before you for comfort, hope, and to cling to that promise of the resurrection to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, O oh Lord, we pray, and everything you see that would be good and wholesome for us, grant, we pray, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We want to thank uh, the Schultz family and Bernard family for the soup supper tonight. Let's say thank you to them. And for all the uh, confirmation students that helped with the uh, serving of the suppers, we continue next week with Soup Supper and looking at the prayers of Jesus as Jesus prayed in solitude. What does it mean to find solitude in our lives in such a, a busy, crazy world? Very important prayer. Uh, also announcement, uh, Saturday night here at 7 o'clock, the Red Cedar Symphony will be performing. I don't know if you've heard the Red Cedar Symphony, but they fill up this part of the church and the music just echoes off the, the ceiling, the wall. So spread the word, Red Cedar Symphony here Saturday night at 7 o'clock. Thanks to Daryl for getting us on the World Wide Web tonight. Any other announcements from anyone? If not, our closing hymn is Have No Fear, Little Flock. Thanks to Rachel for playing tonight. And if you brought an offering, there's a plate in the back. Now hear the words of the benediction. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us and the world you made with your favor and grant us your peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to serve the Lord.
Thank you.